Good morning. It is Monday, October 3rd, and I'm happy to be with you again. Today, it's October. That makes me happy. I love the fall, and I'll put a picture out later, but I have the best warty pumpkin that anyone can find on their porch. The rest of my family is not so crazy about it, but I love this pumpkin. It's full of warts, and it just is so unique. But I've always been a fan of the misfits, whether it's people or items or things, what have you. This is unusual. I love it. And I love the way it looks sitting in my front porch. That aside, uh, my name is Melissa Ebkin. I'm the pastor of the Iliopolis and Nyanic Christian Churches, Disciples of Christ in Iliopolis and Nyanic, Illinois. I am the founder of Light Life and Love Ministries and Outreach for those who are spiritual but not religious or who haven't found that right church community just yet. Also, I'm the host of the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast where we share stories to inspire people to lean into those difficult and uncomfortable situations and overcome them. Life's a lot better when you can kick those things out of your life. So today... I have an important topic I want to share with you. Today I want to talk about anger. Anger is, well, it's out there a lot in our world right now. And anger can be a useful tool. It can be harmful if it's held on to for very long. One of my favorite images about the danger, anger danger, if you will, is being from the Midwest is talking about tornadoes. When there's a tornado warning or a sighting, we in the Midwest know exactly what to do. We run out to the front porch and watch it. But we also know that you can't linger there, that there's a point where you're not gonna have control of the situation, the tornado will have control of the situation. So you can look at it for a bit, but then you have to disconnect and go take shelter. Anger is similar. We think we have control of anger for a bit, but not for long. If we hold on to anger, it will very soon, very quickly, and very completely have control of us. So that's dangerous to hang around anger too long. Anger is an emotion that can inspire us in certain situations. Often when we feel anger, it's because there's an injustice of some sort, that something is not how it should be, and it's causing harm to us or to someone else. So anger is that feeling that alerts us to this injustice or to this situation, and therefore we can be inspired to do something about it, to fix it, to encourage others to change their stance or their position so that there can be justice in a certain situation. Anger in that sense is very healthy, it is very good, and it can inspire us to make this world better, and it can inspire us in ourselves to be better. However, when a situation cannot be fixed or cannot be changed, we don't have an outlet for our anger. We don't have a way for that situation to be resolved and our anger to be released. So it ends up hanging out with us. And that prolonged anger, that unresolved anger, can really cause us a lot of problems in all aspects of our lives. Physically, if we're holding on to anger, it's going to express itself. And there are a lot of different ways it can do that. A lot of poor health outcomes are a result of holding on to those negative emotions like anger or grudges or the like. But if we insist on holding on to our anger, we can expect higher blood pressure. We can expect maybe ulcers or a hundred other conditions. I'm not a doctor. I've read some articles about what danger anger proposes to us. So I encourage you to do some research there. Also check out the Spirit Health blog. I'll put the link in the comments and there's some more information about that there as well. So physically, anger will cause us problems. Spiritually, anger will cause us problems. Now again, anger in and of itself can inspire us to make the world better. Prolonged anger that is unresolved 
can cause us spiritual problems. When we are not guiding the ship and we want our soul in charge of our lives, we want our soul to be driving the ship, if you will. Our soul is where all of those deep-seated values live, our moral compass, all of that lives in our soul. That is what we want to be in charge. When we are experiencing anger, that's not what's in charge. In fact, that basest level of our brain, that reptilian brain, if you will, that's in charge of fight, flight, fawn, or freeze, is often in charge when we are experiencing anger, and that is the last thing we want driving the ship. In a situation where our lives are in danger, absolutely. See, I'm experiencing some connectivity issues, so if this is video is a little hinky, I apologize for that, but again, click the uh, link in the comments that I'll post at the conclusion of this video. It'll take you to the blog, and if you missed anything, it's all there. But Spiritually, when we give in to those prolonged bouts of anger, we make choices that we would not normally make. Again, anger is dangerous. We don't control anger for very long at all. In short term, anger controls us and it directs us away from that source of our devotion. Anger will lead us into making choices that we don't want for our lives. So spiritually, Anger is dangerous. And emotionally, we're going to be in a bad mood if we're angry. We're going to say harmful things to others. So just all the way around, anger, when we hold on to it, is dangerous for us. So what can we do to dispel our anger? There are a few quick things we can do. Uh, one, if you have a practice of regular prayer and meditation, or prayer or meditation, those will give you access to a part of yourself that you can utilize in these moments. If you have a regular practice of centering prayer, if you have a regular practice of meditation, then you know what that space feels like and looks like inside of your body and you can access that to calm yourself down quickly. So if you don't have a prayer practice, if you don't have a meditation practice, I have some resources, click the link below, and it will help you get those established. And in those moments of intensity, you can access that and move through those in a more healthy way. But um, there are some things you can do. Counting to 10, taking a few deep breaths are common and because they work. They work, take a few deep breaths. Uh, picture a balloon behind your belly button. And picture yourself trying to fill up that balloon that will switch off that fight or flight reflex in your brain. It will get another healthier part of your brain driving the ship and you'll make better choices. That's what the goal is here. So these practices help us to do that. So breathe, count to 10, do a math problem. Uh, recite the beginning of the Gettysburg Address or say a poem. Anything that makes you think for a minute will get you into a better place and dispel the intensity of those emotions. So that's how you get a little calm so that you can act in ways that your soul wants you to act. Uh, another way to deal with prolonged anger is to be active. Use the energy that that anger has inside of you when you feel that ball of anxiety and anger ener that's energy in your body. Use it to go do something. Go take a walk. Uh, use it in a way that's healthy. Don't use it to go cause harm. But use that energy as a way to move your body, to propel your body. And when you're done, when your body is exhausted, your soul and your spirit and your mind are going to be refreshed and energized. And in short term, your body is going to feel energized as well. So be active. Use these two quick techniques to calm down in the moment. Use that energy to be active and move your body. So many good things come from that. And, uh, you know, if the anger is a result of a solution of a situation that you can't resolve, at least in the immediate sense, 
sit down and try to brainstorm some ways that maybe it can be addressed or maybe there can be some resolutions and then be an active part of making that happen. And resolving the situation that brought out the anger will help that anger go away because it won't be relevant anymore. And then lastly, I want you to think about, could that anger possibly be something else? Anger's familiar. By and large, though we don't like being angry, we are okay with it because it's a familiar burden and we know how to do anger. But sometimes anger can be an imposter. It may be that we're actually feeling fear or guilt or shame or grief. Those things are heavy. We don't like those. So often we will use the energy of those emotions and just call it anger but we know term. So take a moment, take some time and try to understand what your anger really is. If it's anger, then deal with it in the ways we've mentioned above. But if it's something else, if it is grief, if it is shame, if it's guilt, if it's fear, if it's any of those things or others like them, sometimes just naming it will help ratchet it down some. But the thing about those other emotions that feel so more intense than anger, they're scary. But when we name them, we can deal with them and eliminate them from our lives. So take some time to see if your anger is an imposter for something else. But Anyway, all of this and some other things are in the blog, the Spirit Health blog, and I'll put that link in the comments. Hop over there, comment on this, let me know your thoughts. Uh, let me know what you're going to try next time that you're in an, in an intense situation. I like the math problems. I like counting back from 100 by 7s. That, that helps me to get centered pretty quickly. So let me know what you like to do, what tools you use. But uh, that's a wrap for today. My hope for you this week is that you are able to identify all of your emotions as they are an important part of your overall health. Listen to your emotions. What are they trying to tell you? Because that's what they are, their information for you to navigate this world as safely and in as much health as possible. So my wish for you is that you would listen to your emotions and I'm rooting for you. I want you to have the most spiritually and emotionally healthy life that you can. And if there's any way I can support you along the way, I want to do that. Just reach out and let me know. So again, I'm Melissa Ebkin, and I hope you have the best week. Talk soon. Bye-bye.